everybody. Welcome. We are still having people coming in and joining us. So welcome to this uh, short presentation. Or a quick overview on leading change with appreciative inquiry. Uh, are you all able to see, hear, and see me and hear me? If so, yeah. if you can just put a thumbs up or uh, through your video, I'll be able to see you. Thank you very much on that. Okay, so um, thanks for coming in, coming on board so very early. So let me start off by uh, I would like to begin by looking at uh, the next uh, let's go into our next slide and that would be leading the change in Okay, my name is Michael, so if you want to address me as Michael or Mike, I answer the both names. Okay, all right. So now, uh, virtual some virtual housekeeping rules. We're going to start off by saying, if you could uh, mute your audio, if we have not muted your audio already, please mute it so that we don't have any background noises that come into our session. And uh, do turn it on before you speak so that we will be able to uh, hear you. <laughs> the other one would be uh, keep your video on because uh, at least I'm be able to speak to some uh, live audience and not just to a still uh, uh, face. So I'd like to interact with you. So please do keep your video on. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, uh, do drop. Uh, there's a chat uh, on, on that. Uh, in the box over there, please uh, do write your question there or under the Q&A uh, section. Alright, so with that, let me just uh, move along uh, as to what we are going to do. So just to give you a quick overview as to what we are going to do uh, in this presentation, short presentation, uh, would be the following. A couple of introductions first and then some expectations. Oh, let me just start on with the seven day expectations. There'll be lots of polling, so be prepared with your mobile phones. Uh, there's going to be a QR code there for you to uh, link onto your uh, polling so that you uh, <coughs> uh, like to have your reactions there. Okay, so after the introductions, uh, we're going to talk on what is change, what is change all about, and what is your role in change in the change process. Uh, there are three major roles that we're going to look at and what is your role in this change process. Uh, so what's the, you can understand the change process. Uh, we're going to look into one uh, model and that is Kurt Lewin's change framework. And I'll be sharing this with you later on. And then at the end of it, uh, we're going to look into how appreciative inquiry is linked to uh, Kurt Lewin's uh, uh, model. All right. So with that, a, as a quick overview, uh, let's carry on. Oh, quick uh, background about myself. Uh, way back in the 1980s, I started my career in aviation after my national service in uh, Singapore, and then I transited onto HR management, and then I decided to move into HRD. Right now, I'm a co-partner in this uh, company called Regal Management Consultants and we've been doing uh, work around the ASEAN region as well as, as in Asia Pacific. Uh, <clears throat> currently I am also a, an associate uh, lecturer with our Singapore Institute of Management and also their associate uh, trainer. Way back in 19, 20, uh, 2016 I've been a uh, an uh, associate of trainer facilitator with Aventis. Currently, I'm working, uh, helping out uh, PMETs uh, who are out of work, and uh, especially in working out their personal profiling, in specifically uh, through urgent methods, and uh, also to polish their CVs and update their interview skills. Um, so, I think that's about it. All right, so right now, let me ask if you could just take your mobile phone and go into this QR code. Uh, in Singapore, we are in our 39th day of circuit breaking. Uh, 
So that means we have uh, to stay at home, do our work from home, and uh, work from home, basically. That's basically, basically what we So I'd like to find out how, how are uh, you feeling right now at this moment. So if you can go to slido.com, uh, key in this particular number, hex 78132, or if you already got your QR code, uh, it will bring you directly into it. And if you can just uh, key in your findings, that would be fantastic. How you're feeling today, it will be, it'll be nice to know. All right? So please uh, key in. I, I'll just allow you some time to key in and then I'll show you what we have been, uh, what, what the whole, wow, we got about close to 160 of you uh, in our, uh, our Zoom uh, site to today. I'm, I'm very impressed. So uh, let me give you a couple of uh, minutes to key in and then I'll show you our collective results. All right. Wow, that's very good. We're fine, feeling okay. Tired, long to go back to work. Wow, this person, I will have to salute you, all right? You're fantastic, normal, feeling okay, feeling fresh. Was have gone for a walk or some very good breakfast. Uh, had a good sleep. Wow, you've had a great, that's very good. You're feeling fresh. Fine, that's very good. Well done. I am impressed with your... Uh, hmm, bored, tired, or can't wait for life to get back to normal again. Oh, that's all right. Oh, thank God it's Friday. So I'm so glad that we kind of uh, uh, positioned this uh, talk uh, on a Friday. Huh? Okay, it's the weekend. TGIF. Yeah, well done. Uh, uh, feeling conflicted. I want to go out, but I also want to stay at home. All right. I suppose you can, you can start uh, your world tour. You know, starting from the bedroom to go to the kitchen, and go back to the living room, and then go to the bathroom. So that will be your world tour within the confines of your room, of your house. Oh, it's a weekend. Hey, that's very nice. Very, very good. Thanks very much, everybody. Uh, yeah, somebody says, I want to go back to work. Hey, you're already working, aren't you? But in a different location. Yeah, okay. Hey, that's very nice. Excellent. All right. So let me go into the... All right. So with that, uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with your, with your reactions. Uh, thanks very much, everybody, for putting it in and the majority of you have got uh, uh, just a fantastic uh, a feel, a very, very positive vibes on that. Now, we've got uh, one on this, I'm uh, not so sure whether we have a chat. Yes, we've got a chat up here. And if you can go into the chat, can you look for the chat? And I'd like you all to do something and that is this. Could you identify one change situation you are currently experiencing? It can be at work, it can be at home, it can be socially, but I'm just looking for one change situation you're currently experiencing. And uh, <clears throat> maybe at this stage, if you can uh, have your uh, video on, and then if you would like to speak, uh, you may want to activate your audio, but that's perfectly okay. You have your choice. But here I'm looking at your chat. There's a Zoom chat group. If you can click onto that, uh, you, if you could just type in one change situation. I see uh, Yun, Yun Wan, is it uh, less interruption, better focus? Okay. Nor, you, you mentioned that no need to rush to work. Or oh, you're talking about transportation, I suppose. Uh, ASEAN, you say working from home and managing expectations. Oh, okay, yeah, that could be. 
unable to meet colleagues. Wow, that's not get used. To. <laughs> I like that one. You gotta get used to working with your spouse floating around. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, somebody says you're bored at home. All right, <laughs> less social interaction. Oh, learn some cooking, Pauline. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just make sure that if you're going to cook for someone, that you don't bring a burnt offering to the individual. Uh, Pratima, you will say, what well, cleaning the house. Yeah, that's also part of work. Huh? Yeah, okay. Change situation. Well, last time you had someone to do the cleaning for you, and now you're going to clean it yourself. All right. That could be one major change. Yeah. Uh, Xiang Yi, Cindy, Cindy, you say improve my culinary skills. Wow, that's fantastic. So when can all can you invite all of us to taste a bit of your um, Master Chef uh, product? So having to do things. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, Sri, I say, wow, you're gonna see your own children more. Yeah, okay. So. Pratima is reading books and newspaper. Oh, finally you get to see, you get to read. Huh? Last time, no time. Yeah, okay. <coughs> uh, Timuli say, yeah, not normal life. You can't visit anybody. Pratima, cup of coffee. Yeah, cup of coffee. Or oh, maybe you should have changed that to cups of coffee. All right. So we'll see what happens to that. Hmm, Trishna, I say one day you notice your routines are all messed up. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, Pratima, hey, you've been influenced by me, huh? By changing that to cups of coffee. <laughs> all right, hey, that's very nice, very nice. Okay, so with that, thanks everyone. Hey, that's uh, keep your your keep your uh, answers uh, in the chat. Keep it going, all right? So because I'm gonna come back to that uh, change situation that you're going to currently experience. Uh, for me, let me share with you what I kind of experience. Uh, I, I've got to experience, uh, wait, hang on, let me go into uh, this one here. Yeah, uh, what have I, oops, what have I experienced now with this? Uh, I, I've got to come to learn about new terms and new ideas. Uh, I've got to learn what is the meaning of social distancing. Uh, I've got to uh, find out uh, this global pandemic. I've got to change. Uh, all these are some new words uh, to me. You know? And so there's an N95. We're going to talk about lockdown, COVID-19, quarantine, ventilator. Uh, these are some of the new words that are <coughs> that I've got to kind of learn. So, so working for acronyms come along with it, right? Working from home. And uh, in Singapore, we heard of this latest word, and that is sovereign. Yeah, I'm a sovereign person. And uh, in also in Singapore, we are hearing there's some unprecedented uh, uh, things that are coming on board. And guess what? There's this particular word that comes uh, that's been uh, with with me, and I was wondering for a couple of days I got a bit confused. What's the meaning of this? Flattening the curve. What in the world is this? And for me, this is what I I know about flattening the curve. That's about all. I I won't know anything else. All right. So then I realized, oh, this is the meaning of flattening the curve. So I've had to change my vocabulary. Uh, completely uh, uh, so far uh, on this uh, aspect here. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, in Singapore, uh, this is what I, I, in our Singapore newspapers, this morning's newspapers, yesterday we had 750 new COVID-19 cases in Singapore. And by the same time, we have had a record of 1,164 people, patients that were discharged. Some good news there. Uh, there's some sad news over here. SIA kind of uh, first ever lost a full year uh, report, the loss of a 212 million uh, Singapore dollars, which is not a very good one. And this is uh, today's uh, headlines that says Singapore will have to live with COVID-19 for some time. Expect 
recurring waves. Uh, waves means what? Clusters that would be suddenly never heard of would suddenly come on board. And so these are big uh, headlines that will and influence my 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 reactions right to change so let me ask you for one more one more thing and that is this <clears throat> once again uh, could you just go to this uh, uh, slido.com and uh, can you just type in what are your reactions when you are faced with such changes especially when you read headlines such uh, daunting headlines and often the headline seems to be on a negative side so what are your reactions to change so let me give you a couple of minutes to key in your reactions and then before i show you what uh, everybody's uh, collective reactions would be like all right so i'm gonna just just keep quiet for a while and let me get you to write your thoughts and just write down what are your reactions to change. I'm going to stop my my uh, screen for a while whilst I go to whilst I go and check uh, the one about your reactions all right so bear with me everyone Wow, this is what uh, your references are, huh? Worried, anxious, changed. Majority of you say worried. Yeah, Major uh, quite a number of you say anxious. A uh, number of you say, say, I've got to adapt. <coughs> and then we've got the peripherals of this. Hey, upset. Yeah, <laughs> why, why suddenly there's uh, this particular change? Yeah, we, we would be, definitely, I would be upset too, why not? Yeah. Okay, so this is fantastic. Very good. So let me go back to my... Uh, to my... this portion for change. Yeah, hey, thanks very much for your reactions to change. Okay, here are some perspectives. Uh, on the reactions to change, okay? Uh, it's inevitable, all right? Uh, I've got to be, the change will be steady. Choices in, in the, we're going to make choices, it's kind of risky and kind of drastic. Then somebody says this, uh, my reaction to change is, hey, change is for the better, right? So that will be something for us to ponder and start looking for in this case. And uh, C. Kunalan was one of Singapore's um, golden boy in athletics. And he was asked for his uh, reactions to our stay at home uh, order. And he says, it will take some time, but if we stay positive, strong and healthy, we will recover. Because he said this, every cloud has a silver lining. Some words of wisdom from uh, C. Kunalan, uh, one of our top uh, athletes in this, in this uh, in the yesteryear. All right, uh, in Singapore, we have this uh, supermarket uh, called Sheng Xiong. And guess what? 
the Lim family broke the, the ranks of a supermarket and became a billionaire in this COVID-19 uh, season. And uh, he, he, his business went fantastically uh, positively well. And if I'm not mistaken, in this particular article, all his staff got a uh, one month's bonus, extra, extra bonus on that. Now, there is this particular article which I, th I kind of like very much, which says uh, we are all not in the same boat. Somebody said, all of us, uh, or, or most of the leaders say, we are in a storm. We are in a tsunami. But this article say, hey, yes, we are in this storm. We are in this tsunami. Guess, but guess what? We are all not in the same boat. For some people, unfortunately, and in this case, the newspapers reported a uh, divorced couple uh, <coughs> face uh, child access and maintenance issues. But at the same time, there's some good news. Uh, somebody else in the in the different boat says the ground effort sees uh, 1.3 million masks being donated. Okay, let me pause for a while and I want to share with you this particular article and it is found in Facebook. And so let me pause at this stage here because I want to share with you this particular article. And yeah, are you able to see this article? Yes, if you are, can you just give me a thumbs up or something like that so that at least uh, I know you all can see? Yeah, oh, good. Thanks very much, everybody. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to keep quiet for a while. And I'm going to get you all to do a, a bit of a silent reading and see what, as you begin to read this particular uh, article, that we are all not in the same boat. There's some uh, wisdom in this particular article. Okay, so let's get back to our article on this and some food for thought over here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, sometimes I can say, hey, I'm, I feel the pain, hey, but somebody else will feel a different uh, experience altogether. All right. Now we come now to the three major roles when every one of us face a change and in particular I am referring to uh, major roles all of us play in and in the organization and in the organization there are basically three major roles all of us play the first one is called the change or what I would label as the change sponsor and this usually would be the people who are the one who got the power to determine uh, that a change will occur in the organization and they are the one and usually these are the people who are in the decision makers uh, level so it could be the ceo the directors and people in the upper uh, level of senior management level the people uh, i call this group will be the change agents and the change agents are the people who are responsible to see the change will take place and so when the change occurs they are the ones that lead and manage the change usually these are the people who are in the middle or lower level management the team leaders so to speak and the last group 
uh, who do you think they are? Maybe, maybe another word for them could be the slaves in the organization. Oops, cannot I call, can't call them slaves, right? They are the they are change target. So they are the people who are going to be targeted to change. But guess what? The sponsors are also being involved in the change. The change agents themselves are going to be involved when the organization goes to change. But these are the groups who are the change targets, who will be asked to change something. It could be anything. It could be a change of knowledge. It could be a change of skills. Their job function is completely wiped out. Whatever they, they did before is now completely gone. It's gone because of the result of this major change. And so, it, usually, it is the responsibilities of the change agents to assist this group of people to manage the change. All right. Now, what happened? Oh, yeah. So, uh, this is just for my own reference. Uh, could you just go back to this uh, QR code again? And let me know what is your role in when the organize when you all when your organization goes through a major change are you a change sponsor are you a change agent or are you the change target hmm. all right okay i'm going to pause at this stage because i got to go to and get your answers in the in the website just give me a minute Wow, uh, I am, you know, give me a minute, I already got your answers. Uh, hmm. How come I am missing, uh, oh, return to the meeting, okay. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, okay, I'm back. Uh, are you able to see the uh, the an your answers? If not, let me let me share. And yes. Okay, got it. Wow, the majority of you are the change target. You better not be in a bull's eye, okay? Because if you're in a bull's eye, it means it's going to be very tough. All right. Hey, we got five of you who are the change sponsors. So, my dear friends, that's fantastic. So, it is going to be an interesting group. So, we've got, uh, yeah. So, the uh, change sponsors and the uh, change agents, then uh, I think uh, I would really welcome you to come and join our coming. Uh, coming um, workshop all right so, so yeah, just do, do join us for that now now I come to this particular uh, uh, so, all right so now that we know our roles what happens now there are five ch common change uh, management change models you've got quarters model McKinsey's uh, model you got Edgar model uh, Kubler-Ross model and Kurt Lewin's model. Uh, for this particular workshop, I'll be focusing on Kurt Lewin's model for the simple reason it is very straightforward. Everybody understands how this particular model works. So this is how uh, Kurt Lewin's change model works. Uh, it goes through three major 
uh, stages. First stage is called to unfreeze, and then you go through the second stage, which is to change, and then the last stage is to refreeze. And so, uh, unfreeze means we want to, to create the right environment so that when the change takes place, there will be less, less resistance. Uh, what happens then is this, when we go into stage two, we go, we go through the change uh, stage and uh, this is where we begin to support the change so that we can all go to the desired state when the change uh, takes place. And then lastly, we reinforce and anchor the change that has just taken place. Now, what happens would be this. Uh, in between stages, uh, it, at every stage, I will then introduce, we will go through in detail in the workshop as to how to go about managing the change in each stage. There will be models, there will be questionnaires, there will be interviews, uh, role plays for you to work on towards uh, ensuring every stage is taken care of uh, in detail. Now, as we go through, let me just backtrack a bit. As we go through stage one, stage two, stage three, there is an underlying uh, invisible hidden uh, item. And that item is called resistance. So let's go to the chat uh, portion again. And if I can get you to key in now your answers, why do people resist change when a change is going to take place why do people have a pushback so if you could indicate your reasons in the chat uh, so that uh, they'll be fantastic hey i like your answers fantastic very good no buying in shall we you said uh newton's third law yeah i suppose so <laughs> Ah, yeah, Hazel talks about adjusting. Lack of trust, yep, stuck in the comfort zone, scared, worried. Yeah, out of the comfort zone, it's fantastic. Fear of the unknown, yeah. There's a lot of adjustments to do, you're right. That's fantastic. Okay, that's good. Well done. Hey, thanks everybody on that. Let me share with you what uh, the pre, my, my, the responses from all the participants of this workshop, what did they give? They say, hey, uh, people people are fearful, but guess what? Is What does fear stand for? Is false evidence appearing real. People are kind of confused. Uh, and so what are we, whoops, I think I got stuck there. Uh, let me just work that out. And people are confused. So, uh, let me just work this out. Okay, people are confused. People are too lazy. Uh, so, exactly what you guys have been talking about. Yeah. All right. So this, these are some of the responses I picked up from uh, participants who were uh, previously in my class uh, doing this program. All right. So why do people resist change? And so. We come to this particular aspect over here, and somebody said this. Uh, guess what? When we go through, we go through about sixty thousand thoughts each day. Don't ask me how they count. Okay, up to sixty thousand thoughts, but eighty percent of the time is in the negative, generally, and so people, uh, because emotions are involved in this. Uh, Man Gandhi mentioned that if you can't change, you can't change how people treat you or what they say about you, but all you can do is change how you react to it. Some words of wisdom here. Now, uh, we come to this, uh, our current situation right now. So post circuit breaker in Singapore and in your respective countries and in post COVID-19, what now? What's your organization's perspective and what's your personal experience? Uh, just watch what your thoughts, because from your thoughts, what you think would then be related to how you feel. And remember at the very beginning, I asked how am I feeling today? You need to go back about how you're feeling today, because if you're feeling positive, 
then what happens is your behavior becomes positive and your thought pattern become positive right and so with this in mind uh, we <coughs> today's newspaper talks about DBS is going to hire uh, 2,000 more people in Singapore despite the COVID-19 economic slowdown and if you go down uh, in this particular article the CEO says uh, nobody would be retrenched so some good news over here another set of good news is this uh, <coughs> Uh, WHO's regional director for Western Pacific says when COVID-19 vaccine will be made global for the public good. So there's some good news uh, for us at least uh, in the midst of bad news, right? Uh, our Singapore Straits Times, today's headlines talks about uh, Wilma International and his CEO is giving a record 7 million Singapore dollars to the Straits Times kids for fun, uh, fun for disadvantage kids so with this money the children are able to go to school have proper breakfast proper meals and so it's going to be disimbursed for children throughout the, this coming uh, year uh, top of the news is a hotel chef feels the need for supermarket staff so you just fantastic in this so some good news uh, from home uh, ladies especially right work from home outfits that feels like pajamas <laughs> so uh, so in this case here, yeah, buyers uh, sold on virtual home tours. Yeah, I suppose like we can go uh, from our bedroom to our kitchen. You can fly in there if you want. All right. So some good news in our straight time this morning headlines. All right. So based on that, we now come to what I would call the heart of this particular workshop. Um, we will go through what we call appreciative inquiry, and this is ideally would be a good workshop if everybody is comes from the same organization because you all have to decide what is the topic that you would like to discuss and then i will walk you through in detail the discovery uh, mode what is best and what is this best and then we will together we will dream what it could be and then we will design what it should be and then uh, we will then uh, create a destiny and decide what will it be for our organization. But if the, uh, if the workshop, uh, we get a lot more from people from uh, public, public run organization, then what happens uh, we will then use, uh, I've got some generic uh, topics that we all can discuss together uh, so that I will be sharing with you the process are going through appreciative inquiry and then you bring this process back to your respective organization and then you work with your change sponsors to make your change happen all right so that is basically what it is okay so we are now coming quite close to the end of my presentation because uh, i now see that we only got five minutes more before i can go into the q a so let's me go into the loose ends and if you can type uh, in your in the chat box if you have any queries questions regarding the coming workshop which i shall be conducting that would be a great great help so if you have any queries questions on this particular what we've been sharing so far just go to the chat chat uh, box and just key in yeah, if not then uh, whoa. <laughs> this is what uh, I've been, uh, this is what I think uh, Aventis will be looking out for, if you can uh, say, okay, I've got, now got a question, do you think change in management is a good thing? <laughs> uh, this one, oh, you wrote to me privately and not to, to everybody. Okay, I think it uh, has got to do with a change of mindset. 
uh, especially in today's context, we've got to change and be nimble in our changes. Uh, I've been keeping up with uh, the amount of changes ever since the COVID-19 was announced in Singapore, and I can tell you, it is breathless. We, you, uh, just you know the, the slides which I I prepared um, um, one, one month ago uh, became obsolete. Why? Because uh, I've got to update it as we go along. So, uh, Lizzie, my my answer to your query is uh, be a positive one towards your management so that uh, you become a you become a great supporter of your manager uh, Gabriel is asking are all changes considered good change well uh, it goes back to the objective of what you're looking for at the end of the journey if you can meet the change why not uh, yeah it goes to the needs and relevant uh, to the society so what how how relevant it is to our society today. How to react to drastic changes to organization with new management in place. <laughs> I, I, can only, I can only give you one word. And that one word is, starts with the word C. Communicate uh, with your new management, especially with your new management. And may I just may I just offer you communicate to the power of three. Communicate, communicate communicate so keep on communicating with your new management uh, how do you deal with change especially if it is of a big impact wow <coughs> uh, for us in sing uh, this is uh, Chiru is asking right how do you deal with change uh, with a big impact so if it's going to be impact you got to ask yourself it impacts does it impact the organization does it because if it impacts the organization it impacts the people so how well prepared are you at the very beginning so if you are proactive you won't be able to deal with change if you are reactive then change will have a very very you you're gonna the, the impact of change is going to be very painful so i hope that answers your question yeah. Okay. So for those of you who uh, was waiting for the questions to come in, uh, please sign up because uh, we are able to sign up. Then I'll be able to uh, reconfigure uh, my 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 slides, my my program. Big impact uh, could be leading to retrenchment. Uh, Vernon is asking. Yep. So big impact could be lead to leading to retrenchment. Uh, right now, I am helping retrenched PMETs, and sadly, when I ask them, uh, "Were you, were you prepared for retrenchment?" Uh, I would say about 90, 99 percent of them said no. They were very, very comfortable in where they were. Uh, comfortable in in what they are doing. Uh, bearing in mind, uh, Vernon and to the rest of the people, if your job is repetitive, uh, be prepared that your job will be taken over by a machine. And a machine that is equipped with artificial intelligence. And so, uh, retrenchment becomes, becomes inevitable. So uh, what I would suggest is be prepared, be prepared. So be prepared for change, be prepared for major change, be prepared for change. That will, and so when the impact comes, you are ready. So uh, you may also want to contact me privately because uh, I am helping all the people, uh, those who are <coughs> pre pre preparing their, their up, polishing up their CVs, polishing up their LinkedIn profiles so that they are ready when, should, should, I hope, I hope no retrenchment for everybody, but yeah, 
upskill in the meantime perfectly correct Vernon you are right so you are you actually answered your question so yeah so do you think empathetic listening is helpful in dialectic to change minimize resistance to yeah perfectly Julie Janeline uh, you're asking this question yes perfectly correct empathetic listening uh, people are looking for solutions so you may want to discuss the solutions with your target audience if you are a sponsor or if you are a change agent could you elaborate more case studies oops uh, i will be doing this pansy i'll be doing i i, I have a, i have two case studies i'll be sharing uh, extensively in class but during this time uh, sadly I'm, i don't have the, the opportunity and i the by the way the case studies are pre uh, confidential so to speak and i've had to get uh, uh, permission from those two people because the case studies are, I, I led the two companies through the appreciative inquiry step by step and we went through this uh, the we went through incidentally we went through the case study uh, over over let me just go back to that uh, group let me go back to that uh, to this yeah so uh, I, I went through these uh, four steps, four steps uh, with these two companies over a period of two days. Okay, so don't think that you can just do this uh, in, in 20 minutes. Definitely not. Mm. Yeah. So this is something. Uh, this one stage, uh, stage one, two, three, four. These four stages should not be rushed should not be rushed okay so yeah okay so you and thanks very much for your for you for your uh for your comments thank you very much on that uh lizzie is this online meeting zoom more effective than face-to-face -face meeting even after covid situation uh yes and no <laughs> for me i i've been doing face-to-face -face, uh training for more than 20 years now and I've had to modify to go into Zoom and so I've got to make this face-to-face -face meeting as effectively as I possibly can. So to answer your your question, uh, Lizzie, uh, yes and no. Huh? Even uh, I would love to go back to to face-to-face -face meeting but you never know. Uh, <coughs> we have already got uh, notices that uh, we've got to put our mask on we got to have uh, space uh, making sure that we are uh, we are not too close to one another if not we'll be showering one another with droplets when we when we talk so yeah looks like uh, a zoom meeting may be the way to go for a long time to come <laughs> so uh, be prepared for this all right so but in our in our one day this is a one day uh, nine to five uh, be rest assured you i will ensure there will be lots of interaction you cannot sleep uh, in my class okay so that, that's my assurance word to you yeah okay Vernon, thank you very much thank you oh <laughs> That's nice. Thanks very much for that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, have a great day too, yeah. And uh, yeah, any, thanks, any. Yep, keep on uh, being positive all the way. Huh? Yep. Okay, so with that, thanks very much. Uh, I'll be here until, uh, until we, the numbers are dwindling. And so, yeah, for those of you who like to leave, and uh, before you leave, if I trust you would have uh, registered because uh, we'll be in touch. Yeah, thanks very much. Cindy, thank you very much on that. Thank you. Oh, okay.
Okay, so as many of you are leaving, I'll be here until uh, there's zero participants. So, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Lindy. Thank you. Have a good day, too. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. No, hi there. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Thanks. Thanks to you. Yeah, Asmara, thank you very much on that. Yeah, have a good day, Trisha. Yeah. Okay, wow, well, we got about 70 over people, 100, 456 of you. Wow, that's cool. <clears throat> Janelle and Stephanie, you're most welcome. You're most welcome. Quichu, most welcome also. Uh, oh Hong, yes. Thank you. not sure when you came on board uh, but basically it was just to get a feel of what the uh, the participants were feeling <coughs> and uh, and uh, that's about it and then I, I kind of introduced the uh, model the, uh, <coughs> the change model so yeah so if you yeah, so the, the change model itself uh, is very structured. Uh, I use um, Kurt Lewin's uh, change model. So I'm not so sure what is, it could be, what is important to you may not be important to some other people. So yeah, so the change model slide, okay, I let me just walk you through. Um, This one here, here. So this is Kurt Lewin's models, right? To unfreeze, to change, and to refreeze. Okay. And based on these stages, I then use a, okay, I then use appreciative inquiry, uh, the steps to use to to match to match it together, and that's how I. I will be presenting it. So that's why it takes a whole day to walk everybody through the uh, appreciative inquiry model. Yeah. Mm. Great. Oh, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. So if if you really want to to know, just do. Yeah. Most, oh, most welcome. Is he most welcome? Yeah. Change the change model. Okay. Well, what do you mean by change the change model select? Uh, this is <coughs> this is the one. This is a change model. This is a change model. But I use this as a as as a framework. Okay. I use this as a framework. Yeah. Okay, so most welcome. Okay, wow, there are 47 people still around. So I'm just wondering, uh, have they got questions? Mm -hmm.